Today, I will be presenting modeling of masonry and field reinforced concrete frame building. So, I will go through both the evaluation and the design procedures for infilled frames in AC 4117 and TMS 402. I will follow it up with the strut modeling framework for this type of structures, which is the most prevalent modeling approach among the structural engineers. And then finally, I will go through two example buildings where I will implement the strut modeling framework. So, this is a brief summary of my presentation. Uh, I would first go through the background of the infilled frames to understand how they influence the global response. Then the evaluation and the design provisions based on the AC41 and the TMS402 guidelines, followed by the modeling framework and finally two example study frame. One three-story test specimen tested at the UCSD San Diego, uh, University of California San Diego outdoor shack table and the one school building in Nepal, which was severely damaged during the 2015 Gorkha earthquake. So first I will go through the introduction uh, uh what what exactly infill is and how they influence the global response of the structure so <clears throat> the first question that one should answer is what is infill uh, it is referred to the masonry used to fill the opening in a structural frame they can be of different materials like gray bricks uh, from from clay bricks to hollow or solid concrete blocks to timber or even gypsum panels the primary purpose of providing an infill is to create partition between the rooms and also protect the building from external surroundings. The infill panel influenced the global response and behavior of the structures quite significantly. However, they're still not considered as structural components, typically, which can result in inaccurate response prediction. As it can be seen from this figure towards the right, the infill panel can be assumed as an equivalent strut section along the diagonal of the frame. The presence of infills in the RC structures can improve its seismic performance, but the, for that, the bounding frame has to be properly designed to resist the resulting seismic forces for the strut action. However, if the frame is not properly designed, it will lead to premature failure and subsequent collapse of the structure. Therefore, it is necessary that we understand the influence of the infill panels to the bounding frame. So the most important question that we need to answer is whether infills help or hurt? The answer is not that straightforward and it depends on both the dynamic properties of the building and the ground motion frequency content. However, for certain structures that has open ground story where the ground floor is not provided with any infill panels in order to provide an open gar garage or some other facilities, they are quite vulnerable to seismic forces which lead to total collapse of the structure and it causes local shear failure in the frame members. So what happens is that the bottom story is significantly less steep compared to the upper stories as they are open without any infill panels. And therefore all the nonlinearity and the displacement is concentrated at the bottom story that lead to a pancake type of failure. So in this slide, I have put together two videos from the test uh, that was uh, performed in the outdoor shake table in Cali University of California, San Diego. So I will first go through the videos and then I will explain. So as it can be seen from this video, the damage to the frame, which was designed to be brittle, was quite significant. And here you can see towards the right, the one of the column is completely hanging. So this is another video from the same experiment and in this case there is a close up to that right column which had a brittle shear failure. So you can see, you will see after, after a certain time there will be a huge crack, a shear crack and the column is almost hanging. And the only reason that this structure didn't collapse completely was because there were supports provided in the outer plane direction in, during the experiment. In, and that was given to make sure that the shake table was not damaged. So from these videos, we can see that the extent of damage can be quite significant in an infilled RC frame. Similar observation was also made during the reconnaissance trips to Nepal and Mexico. The performance of these buildings during the past earthquakes have demonstrated that these structures are particularly vulnerable to 
seismic loads and they cause a lot of damage even for a medium magnitude earthquakes. So uh, this is one of the failure that you, I have seen during the Nepal 2015 earthquake. Uh, there was a pancake type of failure for one of the buildings with the open ground story. And there was a lot of failures observed in the beam column joints in these structures with out of plane collapse of the infills. Therefore, in order to better understand the behavior of the infill frames, it is necessary that we simulate the nonlinear behavior and the interaction between the infill and the frame. 